Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm your host for the, the show today. And um, uh, we had a last minute cancellation, and my guest, uh, who you know, is going to come on my show in the future, but this gives me an opportunity to get on my soapbox. And I don't get an opportunity to do that too often. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad I have this opportunity uh, to talk to all of you guys that, you know, on an issue that's near and dear to my heart, and that's elections. And, you know, this is 2022, and we have a primary election on August 13th, which is a Saturday, <clears throat> and we have a general election on the, in the, the first Tuesday of November. And uh, we have lots of candidates, lots of candidates for uh, the state offices and for governor, lieutenant governor, and for Congress and for the city councils. And, um, and you're saying, well, why are, why are you talking about this on Condo Insider? And I, I will tell you why. Well, for one thing, you know, these guys, you know, in, 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 in government who, who are elected to office, they make decisions. That's what they do every day. They make decisions that affect everybody's lives, and especially people who live in condominiums, because condominiums are governed uh, by Chapter 514B. It's what they call, uh, you know, a, a statutory remedy. It's something that's made up by the legislature. It's not something that's uh, that is based on common law, uh, which is developed over hundreds of years, uh, like contract law or, uh, you know, divorce law or things like that. But anyway, you know, condominiums are based on statute. Uh, the uh, laws that relate to condominiums are all developed by the state legislature and to some extent by people in Congress and uh, the city and county of, uh, uh, well, the, the county councils in uh, in Oahu, the city and county of uh, Honolulu. And, you know, uh, I think it's important. I really, re really think it's important uh, for everyone, not only condo people to get involved in their elections because, you know, the decisions that affect everybody's lives are made by basically strangers, unless you know who they are. And uh, unless you, and the way you get to know them is during a, a campaign season now, like now, where the candidates are all over the place and they would love to be invited into uh, your home to meet you and your neighbors to find out about your concerns. And you may think this is all she buy, that they're only doing it to get votes. And yes, they are doing it to get votes. But, you know, practically speaking, they also want to become your friends. They want to become uh, your, they want to represent your interests. And so, you know, this is a time for you to, you know, take the opportunity to meet these people and um, get to know what they stand for and whether or not you agree with what they stand for and whether or not you want to vote because you, you are the ones who make the decision. You decide whether these people get into office. And once they get into office, you're the ones who decide whether they stay in office. So you can always hold them accountable because if they, you know, if they don't, uh, if they don't perform uh, to, to your satisfaction, your action is to go to the ballot box and vote them out of office. And so, you know, that's why it's so important for everybody to get involved in these elections that were that are coming up now. And you may think that, oh, well, there's all these candidates and there's all these signs all over the place and people sign waving on the streets and you're so confused and you don't know who they are. So yeah, you, you need to you know, go on the internet, look on their website, see what, you know, because they will say what they stand for and what their issue, what issues are important to them. And, you know, for, for people who live in condominiums, it's really quite strange uh, that I found that, you know, when, when, when people... The, 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 the current legislators and um, even ones, you know, who are, you know, running for office, a lot of them don't live in condominiums. 
they don't know how condominiums work. They don't know about common interests. And uh, to give you an example, there was a bill passed last year, last session, uh, about electric motor, electric vehicle charging station. And you know, I don't, I, I don't think any, there is any dispute that we all know that electric vehicles are coming. The state and the federal government have, uh, have passed policies that say that you know, by 2030, 50% of the cars sold are gonna be electric vehicles. And, and in Hawaii, I think the, 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 the benchmark is in 2040, we're gonna be up to 50% renewable energy uh, efficient. And you know, so, so yeah, the, the whole thing is to, to get away, uh, to reduce our carbon footprint, so to speak, and to use energy efficient, energy efficient technology, uh, so that you know we don't affect the climate, uh, we preserve our natural resources, and these are all really, really uh, good things. Uh, but you know, un unless you know you you have uh, uh, people in office who are going to uh, follow through with these I, uh, these policies, uh, you know, we 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 could have a disaster. And that's why you know everybody you know should be involved uh, in these uh, elections. And just to give you just to talk about what's going to happen, the primary election is August 13, and it's a Saturday. And most and Hawaii is an uh, all mail ballot state, so that means that even if you didn't apply for the absentee ballot, you're going to get a mail ballot unless you want to vote uh, in person. And I know there are certain people who, you know, um, who are concerned about, you know, voting by mail. They don't trust it. They think it's uh, unsafe. Uh, but you know, I think the Hawaii system has worked pretty good. And I've been in, uh, voting by mail for, uh, oh God, I've been doing it for over 20 years, mainly because I've been a poll worker. And if you ever work at the polls, you, you they don't let you vote. Uh, you know, on election day, you have to vote by absentee ballot. So I've been voting absentee ballot for over 20 years. And, you know, to me, it's perfectly safe. I don't see any uh, concern with that. But anyway, uh, Hawaii is an all mail ballot um, state, but they are making, they have provisions uh, for um, on uh, the same day voting. But that means that you need, if, you, if you're not gonna send in your mail ballot, that means that you need to find out where the voting places are. And you gotta find out which are the ones that are closest to you, uh, because I think you need to, you, you can't just show up at anyone. Uh, so, you know, you need to, uh, and there, uh, you, you should Google Office of Election and all the information uh, regarding uh, both the primary and the general election uh, are, are gonna appear on the website. And so you should uh, look at that and uh, see, you know, what your, 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 you know, what you have to do. And the good thing too about getting the ballot in the mail is then you will see who your candidates are and you're gonna have time and you're gonna get your ballot in the mail. Uh, I think uh, we're getting it at the end of July. So that means that you're gonna have your ballot almost two weeks before the, the primary election. So you can look at the names, see, because the, the, you know, most people don't realize that there are different districts and, you know, for Senate, for the uh, state house, for your council member, like in my district, uh, my council seat, my council member seat is open. It's an open seat, which means because my council member is term limited, I think there's eight people running, eight people running for that seat. And even in, in, in my Senate race, there's two people, two or three people running for that seat. And I think for our representatives, there's like three or four. See, so, so, it, so you're gonna get your ballot. You're gonna find out the names of the people who are running and you're gonna have two weeks basically uh, to figure out you know, who they are, go on their website, check and see what their um, positions are. And if there's a candidate form in your area, and everybody's having candidate candidate forms, the uh, the uh, they had one at Lanakia for senior citizens. About 300 people showed up. That was last week, 
And so canon forms are happening all over the place. And in fact, my area, uh, we call it, we're in region five. And, uh, but anyway, our area is having our candidates form in uh, Blaisdell, Blaisdell Park on Saturday morning. So if you're anywhere in the IAEA Pro City area and you wanna meet your candidates, including the gubernatory, the, the people who are running for governor, they're, they're gonna be around. They're gonna be in the park, walking around. And this is what I mean. You need, this is a time for you to go out and actually meet the candidates and ask them questions and listen to what they say and, 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 and see if you like their ideas and ask them questions that are uh, you know, important to you. And 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 uh, you know, see see how you know, uh, you know, see how they react. And you know, everybody, everybody, you know, and especially and people who live in condominiums. People who live in condominiums. You say, well, you know, what am I going to talk to them about? What you know, what what? How are they going to affect uh, you know what happens to me? And um, one one issue that is very, very important. All of you remember the condo collapse in Florida, right? And that was because, I mean, there were issues about the board of directors and whether or not uh, they did the repairs that were required. And the newspapers were saying, oh, but the owners didn't wanna make the, didn't wanna pay the special assessment. And so, you know, there was a dispute between the board and the owners. And because they couldn't come to a decision, Right, the building collapsed, and when 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 you read the news stories, it was because you know certain things you know were not uh, 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 maintained. Like most con most high rise buildings are made of concrete, and no matter where you live, whether you live in Florida or in Hawaii, concrete buildings are porous. The salt air will go in, and they rust the uh, iron rebars, the the steel beams that that make up the building. And when those beams get rusty, the concrete just be, literally falls off, falls off the side of the building. That's what spalling is. I mean, it's nobody's fault that spalling happened. But if it, but you can, you can stop it. You can, if you maintain your building, I mean, you, when you paint your building, the, the, the people who go in and inspect the building before they put the paint on it, they will tell you, oh, you got all these cracks in your lanai's. And, and so you got to fix the, those are, that le leads to spalling, okay? And so, you know, so, so it's not like it happens overnight and nobody knows about it. You can see it. Spalling happens very slowly. It happens with cracks in the concrete. And if you don't address it right away, you end up with a building in Florida, like in Florida, that collapses on you. And it killed people. And it resulted in millions of dollars of loss. And the lawsuit is still going on. Although I heard in the newspaper that there's a settlement. There's a settlement. But, you know, all these insurance companies are, you know, paying uh, the losses, you know, for the condos that were destroyed and for the lives that were lost. And, you know, that could have all been avoid avoided. Hawaii has something called a reserve law. And that reserve law was uh, put in place by Maisie Hirono over 30 years ago. And Maisie was um, head of the House Consumer Protection uh, Committee. And I can remember, I mean, that's how long I've been around. Uh, but I can remember Maisie calling me up and saying, you know, Jane, I can, I, I, my, my, my constituents call me and they're moaning and groaning about condo boards. I mean, they just moved into a condominium and Six months ago, they're getting assessed ten thousand dollars for a roof. How come? Why are they? Why? Why do they have to pay the special assessment? They've only been there six months. Don't you guys have reserves? And and you know, for, for, and back then there was no such thing as reserves. And and Maisie, and this went on for like three years. Uh, she finally says to me, "You know, Jane, I'm getting too many people, too many people who buy into a building." And then a year or two later, they get hit with these huge assessments for repairs that somebody should have been socking money away every year. And I'm going to set up a reserve, you know, a reserve 
require all high rise condominiums have a reserve. So she amended 514. It was 514A at the time, which is now 514B, but it was 514A. And she did, she did that. And she did it because people were calling her. Her constituents were calling her, or even people who didn't live, were her, didn't live in her district were calling her and saying, you know, uh, Macy, I'm having this problem. How come this isn't fair? You know, I just moved into the condominium last year and I get assessed $10,000. That's not fair. With reserves, what the reserve does, a reserve study is something, you know, that where the, you hire a professional and they look at all the components of the building, everything that has to be, that is not regular maintenance. In other words, you put a roof on the building every 15 or 20 years. You don't do it every year. Okay, so that's a component. Okay, you have to repair uh, the, uh, you, you do the painting on the walls of, of the building. That happens maybe every seven to 10 years. Okay, and then when you do, before you do the painting, you check for spalling. And then you fix the spalls before you paint the building. Because if the building is cracking, you don't want to paint it. Because then the spalling is still there. You got to fix the spall before you can put the paint on. And so, and, and these jobs are not cheap. In other words, to paint a building might, you know, to paint a building of maybe 20 stories may run you 800 to a million dollars, 800,000 to a million dollars. And, you know, you, you know, you can't just wait to say, oh, we're going to paint the building next year. So we'll assess everybody in the building for the million dollars. You don't do it that way. You, you, uh, you, you set up a schedule and you say, if we sock away a little bit of money every month from all the uh, unit owners, then when it comes time to paint the building, we don't have to do a special assessment because we got the money in the bank. That's what a reserve is for. And before it was voluntary until Maisie made it mandatory back in the early 90s. And you know, right now, Hawaii has one of the strongest uh, and best reserve laws in the country. And we made it even stronger because after the condo collapse, uh, some changes were made to the law to say, you know, instead of doing the reserve study based on 20 year components, because guess what happened? 20 year components, which means that if the repair doesn't take at least 20 years, it's not in the reserve study. In other words, replacing a roof is in the reserve study because it does, you, you do it less than once, once every 20 years. Painting the building, fixing, you know, repairing the swimming pool, replacing your patio furniture, uh, replacing the carpet throughout the building. You know, these happen less than every 20 years. What we found out in the last 10 years, unfortunately, is that pipes in the building do not last what, what they were supposed to. I mean, we were all told that clay pipes last 75 years. Guess what? Not true. Because a lot of buildings, unfortunately, their pipes failed. And you, you, that happened, you know, that you, you find that out because you have a lot of leaks. And finally, you send in a, a mechanical engineer and he says, hey, you got to replace all the pipes in the building. They're no good. And, you know, the, you know, because the insurance companies, I mean, after you have a bunch of leaks, after you, you, you keep having a, a lot of leaks, guess what? Your insurance, well, uh, the insurance company raises your deductible. Uh, my building, Many years ago, our deductible was, I think, five thousand. We're up to fifty thousand because of the number of water leaks we have. Uh, so you know, so you know, so now replacement of pipes is going to be in the reserve state. Never was, and so when buildings got hit with the news from their mechanical and structural engineers, but that they got to replace their pipes. I mean, that's not a million dollar job. That's like a twenty million dollar job. Think of it. Think of it. If you live in a high rise building and you're told your pipes are defective, they have to be replaced. That means the pipes that go to your kitchen, to your bathroom, uh, to your toilet, to your bathtub, they all have to be pulled out of your building and replaced. And this can be done while you're still in the building, uh, I'm told. Uh, and it's been and it's been done, but it's 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 a terribly, terrifically expensive job. So now, now, you know, uh, because we know that pipes fail, 
they are included in reserve studies. And the uh, legislature in 2022 amended the, uh, that reserve study law to say that it is now that the components are based on a 30 year lifetime. So, and, and uh, every building is required to have a, a reserve study done by a licensed professional or by a professional. And they're supposed to have it done uh, between, I think, I think three and four years. And there's a, there, there's a specific time in there. And this was all, this all happened because of the Florida collapse. And, um, you know, and, and, and the reason why this was done is because in Florida, there was a dispute between the owners and the board. And I'm told that in Florida, uh, it's not mandatory. It's discretionary whether or not the board has got the authority to do these repairs. And that's why, how come there was a dispute between the owners and the board? And they couldn't, you know, get together on, you know, uh, well, the owners didn't want to pay for it because they said, oh, this is a special assessment. And why should I pay $10,000? How come you guys didn't plan things better? And I could have paid $100 uh, a year for, a, you know, a couple of, for 10 years and instead of making this huge uh, assessment. And while they were fighting over it, the building collapses. Okay. In fact, in fact, the news said that the building collapsed just when they were in the process of finally collecting money from the owners to do the repairs to address the spalling, which was the reason for the building collapse. So by that time, it was too late. But in Hawaii, it's mandatory. It's mandatory. It's the word shall is in the statute. And so the boards, you know, have to be aware and the property managers are telling them that they have to be, you know, they have to do this. It's not discretionary. They can't just sweep it under the carpet and say, oh, let's wait till next year. No. Now there are time limits. Uh, they have to do certain things and they have to spend the money to keep the building uh, safe. Another thing, another thing, I mean, there are a lot of pets in condos or dogs or animals in condos. And, you know, I, I live in a no pets building. We have a bylaw amendment that says no pets. But guess what? We got lots of dogs. And I have owners in my building who are grumbling and saying, how can we get all these dogs? Uh, if we're, we're a no pet building. It's because, you know, of, of um, Americans. I mean, it's the fair housing says that, you know, you need to allow, uh, make reasonable accommodations if somebody claims they have a disability and they need to have an animal. And, um, and so, I mean, we go to the legislature every year. I mean, we finally got the legislature to finally agree with us that, you know, those stupid little, you know, uh, scars that says, I'm a service animal that you can buy on the internet, that that's a no-no. I don't know why it took the legislature so long to determine that um, uh, that was a, a no-no, but, you know, they, they, they finally agreed with us that, you know, that was bogus. And you know you couldn't allow that, so now it's now it's not allowed. And see, this is another reason. If you, if you get enough people who complain, the legislators are responsive. And even we consider that a small victory. The 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 I am I am a service animal shirt and scarves and things that you buy on the internet and the certificate. There is no federal certificate for service animals. And so those things that these people that the people were buying on the internet and showing their AOAOs, you know, we're all bogus. And so now the state of Hawaii has agreed and said, oh yeah, it's bogus. We're not gonna allow you to accept that. And so, you know, yes, it's getting more strict, but you know, if you care about animals and buildings, then you should become friends with your legislators. Another issue, smoking in condos. If, you, if it bothers you, I'd be you know, talking to my, you know, the candidates and trying to see if I can, you know, figure out some way to stop it. And, you know, if you live in a building where there's a condo war, where a bunch of uh, owners are fighting with the board and your maintenance fees are going up because you're paying for attorneys. Uh, if I was you, you know, I would try to find some way to stop that. And there are, I mean, there is mandatory mediation subsidized by the state of Hawaii and uh, some boards don't even know about it, but it's in the statute. And if, if they, maybe they don't want to use it. Maybe they want to keep fighting. 
And, uh, but you know, it, it's there. And um, this, like I, I was started off at the beginning of this session, uh, we were talking about EV chargers. And that was, uh, there was a bill introduced about putting an EV charger in every parking stall in a high rise building. And we stopped that because, you know, those legislators who, I mean, yes, you know, this is kind of a nice, I mean, right now, if you want to put an, if you have an electric vehicle, and you want to put a charger in your stall, nothing is there to stop you except you pay for it. The association doesn't pay for it. This bill would have made the association pay for it. So that means that if you lived in a condominium, your maintenance fees would have been used to pay for chargers in every parking stall when you really don't need a charger in every parking stall because right now they got charging stations that will charge more than one vehicle. Right. And 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 if you don't have if you don't have 100 percent of electric vehicle ownership, then why would you want a part charging station in every stock, which is kind of stupid. But, you know, so anyway, we were able to stop that law because, you know, the, the legislators thought they were doing a good thing, but they just didn't understand condominiums that, you know, the, whenever you do a retrofit, which means that you're putting stuff into an existing condominium without giving us money to do it, that the owners have to pay for it. And if you don't have 100% of the people in the building with electric vehicles, why should we pay to have a charging station at every stall, which, is, which makes absolutely no sense. But anyway, we were able to stop that. And you know, uh, my, my, my last issue is a fire safety ordinance in the city and county of Honolulu. I've had people contact me, email me, phone me, and they don't like it. And I have one word, I, when I tell everybody, call your council member. If enough people call their council member on that fire safety ordinance and they really hate it, and I know there's people out there who really hate it, and with uh, condominiums, it's costing them a ton of money to now comply with this law, which wasn't the intent back when the law was passed in uh, 2018. That was not the intent. It was it was to make the building safer, and it was and 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 it was supposed to do it at minimal cost to the association. Now it's turning out to be a big deal, and 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 this is a brand new law. And what you should understand is there are other municipalities in the United States who have mandates to do sprinklers like this fire safety. The fire safety ordinance in Honolulu says thou shalt you will install a fire sprinkler unless, and the big unless is if you do a life safety evaluation and comply with that, okay? Honolulu is by far the largest municipality in the country that has such a law. And, and we're in the process now of trying to implement it. And we're finding all kinds of issues, especially it's costing condominiums a ton of money. If it's costing condominiums a ton of money, guess what? it all goes down to the owners because now they're gonna be paying for more uh, to comply with this law. And for everybody who contacts me, I tell them, this is your council member, call them. And I have council members who have told me, if enough people call us, we'll repeal the law. I hope a lot of, pe a lot of people listening to this will do that. If you're mad about the fire safety ordinance, call your council member because we have people who are willing to introduce a law to repeal the fire safety ordinance, but it's gonna take people like you who live in condominiums to call, pick up the phone, call your council member and say, we want you to repeal the fire safety ordinance. That's what it's gonna take. And if you guys don't wanna do that, it's not gonna happen. And you know, so that's one of the beauties of our democracy is that, you know, if you don't like something, you got to tell people, you got to tell the decision makers. And in this case, it's your elected officials. And guess what? Now they're all running for office. They want your vote. They want your ear. They want to, they, they want you to uh, vote for them. So I suggest you become their best friend. You invite them uh, to your clubhouse, to your cabanas, to meet with your neighbors, and to uh, let them, you know, to, to tell people why you should vote for them to represent 
you uh, in their district. And I've kind of run out of time, so I'm, I'm gonna get off my soapbox. And the next, next time I will be back on uh, the 28th with um, uh, State House Speaker, Scott Psyche, who's been a good friend to condos. And he lives in Kakako and he lives in a condo. You know, so it's not like he doesn't know what he's talking about. But anyway, I look forward to that. And so if you, you want to hear and you and you can, you know, uh, call in or email in questions. So it'll be speaker Scott Psyche will be on my show on July 26th. So but anyway, you should tune in next week for uh, an interesting show with uh, Richard uh, Emery. And he will be here next week, Thursday. And I hope you'll join him. Uh, in another episode of Condo Insider and, and, and mark the calendar for July 28th. And uh, me and uh, Speaker Psyche will be talking about condo issues. Thank you and mahalo. Thank, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.